Uh, well, I've just been talking to David Hogg. He's 17. He's a student journalist. And he started interviewing, filming people on his phone as this began. He started by telling me where he was when he heard that first shot. It was around 2.30 and I was in my AP environmental science class. We hear the first pop because our door was open slightly and um, after we hear the first gunshot, we tell our teacher and she promptly closes the door. Right after she closes the door, um, I don't know if this was the individual, but I don't imagine, I can't imagine who else it would be, pulls the fire alarm. I, I guess it could have been somebody else. Anyways, someone pulled the fire alarm and if it was the individual, it was clearly in it a mission to get more people out and about so he could murder more school children. Um, but after he pulled the fire alarm, sickingly and stupidly in hindsight, we all got up and started walking out slowly like any other normal fire drill. Little did we know at the time, though, that this was anything but uh, a drill. It was life or death. And um, when did you... Anyways. When, when did you realize? I mean, you, you got up, you walked out. When did you yeah, know we, we that, got the, up. that this wasn't a drill? We got up and walked out, and well, I'll continue on chronologically of the system of uh, how this occurred. We got up and walked out to our designated fire zone, but then we, we were soon stopped by just a huge tsunami of people saying, don't go this way, don't go this way, go the other way. So we start going the other way. And little did we realize at the time, we were actually headed straight for the shooter. And thank God for uh, this janitor that stopped us. I don't know his name, but he did. He stopped us, and um, there was a coach not a coach there was a chef right there that um brought us into her culinary arts classroom that was the classroom that was closest to us and she got easily she got easily 65 students into 100 feet of square space within 30 seconds and it was truly remarkable and all, all throughout this i honestly thought this was a drill because it was so well planned out um uh, the actions of the broad county employees were truly heroic, and they saved hundreds of lives that day, if not thousands. You, you guys had, um, had practiced this, hadn't you? you? You'd done these drills before. What would happen in a did. situation like this? We, we didn't have an actual active shooter drill, but there were rumors of that. And as a result, many people thought this was drill, myself included, when we initially started it. Um, but uh, we hadn't had any active shooter drills before this at all, none. What we did have is sit-downs with our teachers where they would talk with us about exactly what to do in this type of situation and have an open conversation that we should never have had to had. Um, but sadly, we do, and that's the current state of this country, and it's unacceptable. And because politicians won't stand up and take a stance, these students that were almost murdered are going to have to. And to be quite honest with you, that's really messed up. It's not okay. And it, said, it shows how politically divided and messed up America is right now and how far we have to go to fix this situation. David. And once I was eight, I'll, I'll continue with the um, it's like I, 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 Yeah, I, I just wanted to quickly ask you something. David, you yeah. have been in a situation now that most of the people who make the laws in your country have never experienced. You know, they decide and, and what that's happens. that's part of the reason why I started recording. Yeah. That's really part of the reason why I started recording because I wanted lawmakers to know that if I died, I wanted to have our story told, and even though our souls would be left behind, I wanted our voices to echo on through, throughout time and possibly make some form of change, because this is unacceptable. Well, how would, you, Eve, how would you school shootings, speak to those, those people? I mean, if, if you had them directly in front of you now, what would you say? I would say, get away. I would say there is no way to feel the way it is to be in that situation when you don't know whether or not you're going to live. What they can do is watch the videos, and that gives a infinitesimally small glimpse into what the actual situation is like but there's nothing like actually being there and what I would ask of them is stop apologizing and get to work pass legislate legislation that actually saved children's lives and unlike the previous shootings like Sandy Hook like the Pulse nightclub shooting they don't pass legislation that's in direct defiance of saving children's lives they pass legislation that actually does save their lives because that's what this country needs we need to come together as American citizens and work together. I know that we have different opinions. And the good thing about that is the diversity of our ideas, that's really what makes us Americans. Because due to our diversity, we're able to take on any issue and solve it. The problem is we get so divided and politically just in a rut that we forget to focus on the actual victims here, children.
And what happens is more and more die every single day. And that's unacceptable. And these, these politicians fail to acknowledge that again and again. And it's time they realize that this is not okay. What they see is political campaign donations from s different interest groups. And that's all they see. They forget that there's blood of these children that is spilt on American classroom floors. And they're doing nothing about it. Tell me about those victims that, that you knew. You talk about the victims and you say that they should be at the heart of all of this. Tell me about they, they really your should. friends. I. I haven't had any of my friends, amazingly none of my friends were taken, but my sister had her three best friends die. And the fact that I have to talk to my sister on the phone, and every time she answers, she is absolutely mortified and crying to the point that I can barely understand her, is absolutely unacceptable. And it's about time that the legislators in this country take a long, hard look and see whether or not they can actually pass legislation that saves these children's lives. And if they can't work together, they shouldn't be in politics. What did you think of your president's address to the nation when he spoke to people like I thought like it was extremely you, hypocritical. He didn't mention guns. It was extremely guns. hypocritical. He didn't mention guns. And he himself pointed out during his campaign that, for example, with the extreme Islamic terrorism, he pointed out the, that the Obama administration didn't acknowledge that. And how can we solve problems if we don't acknowledge these things? I asked him, how do you acknowledge this if you don't mention the thing that killed these people? Guns. How? How do you acknowledge that? It's so hypocritical and insensitive. These are children's lives being taken and nothing is being done. And that's why children at this school, sadly, have to stand up and take action because the political leaders in this country will not. All they want is to get reelected and keep having their money come in from political donors and keep getting reelected again and again while this, the entire country suffers as a result. Do you think they'll listen to you? I hope so. I really hope so. But honestly, I don't know. I really don't. Uh, we've had so many instances like this before that were unbelievably on an even larger scale. And everybody says, this, this will never happen to me. This will never happen to my child. But the second that you start to believe that, it very may well. And that's why everybody in America needs to stand up and take action. Because we are a country ruled by popular sovereignty. When the people don't speak up, politicians don't listen. But when we do speak up, you better believe they listen. And mid this is a midterm year, luckily. So if we wanted to, thanks to the way this country is founded, to the Connecticut Compromise, which was another way of people working together to overcome their differences, where small states and big states were able to agree on a governmental system, thanks to that, we can get all 435 members of the United States House of Representatives out because they're up for re-election for this very reason every two years. Because if we're sick and tired of it, this is our way to speak up as citizens, and now is the time for action. When you go back to school, when school reopens and you go back in and you sit back in your classroom again, will you feel safe? I don't know. I, I've been saying yes, but to be quite frank with you, I don't know. And I hate to say that because that's what these evil people want that commit these atrocities. But to be honest, if our legislators don't take action, how can we ever feel safe? David, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to do thank this. Thank you for Thank you. Me on. You're so eloquent and, and good luck for the future. Thank you again. I'll need it. That's David Hogg, uh, who's 17, who was in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School when that attack started. Uh, your text, that boy should be president, says this one. Uh, this young man is brilliant, Stephen in Rossendale. Uh, Nothing will happen on gun laws in America. Guns make money. Money's more important than the lives of children in the USA, says Robin Yorkshire. What an impressive, erudite and understandably angry young man you've just had on the radio, says this one. 850 uh, if you want to share what you think about that. 16 minutes past six now on Drive.